Roots and radicals, the basics. All right, so if b squared equals a, then b is said to be the square root of a, where b is non-negative and is called the principal root of a. Notice it is non-negative, okay? The square root is defined to be a function. Therefore, when you plug in a number, you only get one number out, the principal root. Now, it is true that you can square a negative number and get a positive number, as well as a positive number and get a positive number. So, but for the purpose of def defining a square root, it is non-negative and is called the principal root. Note, the square root of a negative number is not a real number. If you multiply something times itself, you cannot get a negative. You multiply a positive times a positive, you get a positive. You multiply a negative times a negative, and you still get a positive. You cannot have a square root of a negative number and it be a real number. That is something called complex or imaginary numbers. Now, those things actually very much exist in the real world, which is funny that we call imaginary numbers, uh, imaginary numbers and they exist in the real world. But for the purposes of this, it is not a real number, and I'm talking about the set of real numbers. In fact, any even root of a negative number is not a real number. When I say even root, okay, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, square root, the root is 2 there. So here, this symbol is the radical symbol. This is a radical or a root symbol right here inside the green box. This, this is our radical or our root symbol, okay? We call it a radical, all right? And then, then we have either something here or nothing here. In this case, there's nothing there. Okay, that is understood to be a 2 if it is empty. See, in math up until this point, probably up until this point, we may have encountered something else along the way, but most likely this is the first time you encounter something in math that is not an understood 1. Right, We're, we divide by understood 1, we multiply by understood 1, we raise to an under, understood 1 power. Right, all these things have understood 1s all over the place. And here, this is an understood 2. Now the thing under here is called the radicand. All right, and I may not deal with that just this minute, but that's called the radicand. All right, so in general, the this is called the nth root of a. Okay, the nth root of a. That's how you read that. The nth root of a, where n is the index or the root. So when I talk about an even root, n, if it's even, then you cannot have it an even root of a negative number. So the square root is two. That's even. The fourth root, the sixth root, the eighth root, the fifty-second root, the hundred and eighth root, the two hundred and fourteenth root. Okay, those are even roots. And a is called the radicand. That's the thing under here. That's what I was talking about. That's called the radicand. Okay, the thing under there is called the radicand. For cube roots, notice we have we put something here called a three. Now, when I write them, let me say this: when I write it, I'm going to make my root big, and I'm going to make my three. Notice how my three is undoubtedly in there. If you do this, you need to get out of that habit in a hurry. Because what if there was an X in front of it? So the way I write it, let's go back. The way I write it, I have an X here. Do you ever mistake that for X to the third power? No, you don't. Never would you do that. If you did it this way, now what is that? Is that X cubed or is that the cube root? See, so if you write your cube roots this way, stop. Some of y'all put the porch on there. I can live with that. But I will even do this sometimes. Watch the order this happens. Look at the screen for sure here. I might write the 3 first and, and put my radical around it. Okay? What I mean is I might put my, you know, if I have 4 through, put the 4 and then build the radical around it. What I mean is put it like this so that the 4 fits in there. That way there's never any doubt. Okay? That's a detail, but I've told you over and over again, if I can get you to pay attention to detail, be efficient, and be a problem solver, not a problem creator, then you will be better not only at math, but everything you do in life. Everything you do in life, you will be better at. All right? So that little three there means it's a cube root, okay? Third root, cube root. So the cube root of A equals B means that A equals B cubed. All right? So then, for any A out there, positive or negative, for any A out there, okay, let's talk about square roots and cube roots because those are the first two we're going to talk about and do anything with, and then we'll expand out from there. So the square root of A squared is the absolute value of A for any A. All right? <clears throat> the square root of A squared, remember we said it had to be non-negative, so what we're doing is we're saying, what if you square negative 3? And guess what? 
You square negative 3, you get 9. Right, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. What is the square root of 9? It's just 3. It's not negative 3. It's 3, just 3, only 3, nothing else. B is non-negative, okay? It ain't negative 3. So the, the square root of A squared is the absolute value of A for any A. The cube root of A cubed is simply A, and that's because if you take a negative number and you multiply it together three times, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 times a third negative 2 is negative 8. So if you take the cube root of negative 8, you get negative 2. Notice I said you can't take even roots of negative numbers here, right? But you can take odd roots. Cube root, third root of an odd, I mean of a negative is negative. So the cube root of negative 8 would be negative 2. All right? So just keep these two facts in mind as we go through this. All right, and then my other videos, all of them but one, I simplify this a little bit for you, but we'll, we'll get to that and have a disclaimer in there. All right, so what about the square root of 5 squared? So what I really want to do is I want to use this and this for these, okay? <clears throat> so the square root of A squared, if we remember, the square root of A squared equals absolute A, and the cube root of A cubed equals a right those are the two rules we had on the on the page before so let's apply those rules in this situation so here what's being squared right here just the five right the five is my a so this is going to be the absolute value of five applying this rule right here okay there's no need to say that's 25 and then the square root of 25 is five we can go down that road if we want to but we're applying that rule the rule says whatever you're squaring under the square root just takes the ab just take the absolute value of it what is the absolute value of five Five. Remember, the absolute value is the distance from zero. It is also always non-negative. It is zero or positive. Okay? So then the next one here, the next one is going to be the absolute value of negative four, which is four. If you follow the other path, what is negative four in parentheses squared? And by the way, that's the only way to square both the negative and the four. If you write, if you write this down, you only squared the four and not the negative. All right? So... I address that in another video where I talk about exponents. All right. So here, this is 16, and the square root of 16 is just 4. It is not negative 4. It is not plus or minus 4. The square root of 16 is only 4 and always only 4. All right. The definition told us it's non negative. All right. What about this one? This one is using this rule. So my A is what? My A is. 6 in this case. So my answer is just 6. Here, what am I cubing? I'm cubing negative 8. So then that's my A. So my answer is just what? Negative 8. There's no absolute value. There's nothing to think about. You just write it down. Okay? I, there is something to think about. I shouldn't say that. There's no work to do. You have to think about what is my A, right? This is my cube. This is my A. 6 is my A. This is my A. So that's my answer. All right? So you do have to think about something. I shouldn't say nothing to think about. There's nothing, no work to do. You have to think about what A is. Always think when you're doing math, please, or any work for anybody ever, whether it's at school or on the job. Okay? So then what about the square root of 49? So what non-negative number can I multiply by itself to get 49? Oh, 7. Right, the square root of 49 is 7. And if you wanted to go down the road of saying that's the square root of 7 squared and the absolute value of 7 is 7, you can. Okay, but here I want us to graduate up a little bit and go, hey, guess what? The square root of 49 is 7. It is just simply 7. What about negative square root of 49? So first, I take the square root of 49, right? This is all one thing. I take the square root first, which is 7, and then I apply the negative out front, right? I bring it down. So then this answer is negative 7 because there's a negative out front. The square root of 49 is still just 7, and then there's a negative tacked on the front. So what about the third one, the square root of negative 49? Well, look, what did we say? We could not take the even root. Square root is a second root. That's 2 is an even number. You can't take the even root of what? A negative number. So what we say is we say this is not a real number okay now that's a lot to write down so i don't ever write that now i'll write it out for you now but i write narn okay not a real number um i let my students put unreal not real it ain't real <clears throat> i 
A-I-N apostrophe T. Ain't. You don't have to write in and tell me. I'm wrong. The purpose of communication is just to communicate. If you tell me it ain't real, I know what you mean. The cube root of 125. So what this means, what do I raise to the third power to get 125? What do I raise to the third power? So 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. So this is going to be the same thing as 5 to the third power. So the cube root of 125 is 5, and that's one you need to file away in your memory banks. You need to file that away in your memory banks and know that the cube root of uh, or 125 is 5, or 5 cubed is 125. So now, now, <coughs> now for the next one, the cube root of negative 125 says what? Well, it's an odd root of a negative. That's okay. The answer is always negative. So it's negative what? Negative 5. Negative 5. <coughs> Excuse me. Had to call for a second. So what about the fifth root of 32? What on earth do I raise to the fifth power to get 32? Well, look, might as well start. I mean, I know it's not 1. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is, is 1, right? So let's start, let's start with 2. And if 2 doesn't work, we'll go to 3. And if 3 doesn't work, we'll go to 4. But fifth powers are going to get pretty big pretty fast. So <clears throat> let's go through 2 times 2, right? 2 times 2 is 4. That's two twos, right? And then times 2, that's my third 2. That's going to be 2 to the third. It's going to be what? 8. And then times another two, that's my fourth two. Those are not powers. I'm just, I'm numbering them above them, right? So that's going to be 16. And then I got to have one more two. 16 times two is what? 32. And there it is, bingo. So the fifth root of 32 is what? Two. All right. And again, that's another one. Two to the fifth power. Go ahead and file that away. Look, three to the fifth power is 243. It gets, it gets bigger faster, Okay. Three to the fifth power is two hundred and forty three. I don't I don't even ask you to remember that one. I just that's bonus information to tell you there. All right. So <clears throat> what do you do here? What do, what do I do? The square root of twenty five plus one forty four. Do I do I take the square root of twenty five and the square root of one forty four and then add them? Nope. The radical is over all of it, right? It's like there's a parenthesis here. So I have to do inside my parentheses before I go to the radical outside. So to do that, I need to add these two together and get the square root of 25 plus 144 is 169. And look, I know this wasn't on your times tables you learned back in the day. Little flashcards and all, or you know, some of y'all maybe an app you used, all right? For me, it was index cards and a whole lot of writing now. They didn't even sell the flashcards, all right? So then the square root of 169 is 13 exactly. All right, 13 times 13 is 169. And then what about the next one beside it here, the square root of 25 plus the square root of 144. Now here, you have your own square root and then plus and another one. This is actually two separate terms. This was all one term with two terms in here in a parenthesis, understood parenthesis. So here, I need to take each radical separately and then add it together, okay? So what is the square root of 25? It is 5. What is the square root of 144? 12. And then I have a plus between them and 5 plus 12 is 17 <clears throat> 5 plus 12 is 17 so what about the square root of a fraction Wait, what can I do with this well there's this nice property that says hey look if I have if I have I don't want an equal sign yet if I have a fraction the square root of x over y then I can say that's the square root of x over the square root of y all right. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take the square root of 1 over the square root of the other here, okay? So the square root of 1 is 1 over the square root of 81 is 9, all right? <clears throat> and there's no issue here. This, this is positive. If you had variables with negatives, we're going to address that a little later in another video. But um, because those are positive, that's a positive number, there's no issue with taking square root over square root here. So then here, the square root of 121 is 11 over the square root of 16 is 4. And again, you can't simplify 1 ninth or, one ninth or 11 fourths, so you're done. And then what about the cube root of 1 over 1,000? Well, obviously the cube root of 1 is 1 because 1 times 1 times 1 is, is 1, right? But what times itself 3 times, like what times what times what is 1,000? 
Well, what is 10 times 10? 100. What is 100 times 10? 1,000. So that's 10 to the third. So that's really 1 tenth. <clears throat> so the cube root of 1 over 1,000 is 1 over 10. And on this page, I have some perfect squares, some perfect cubes, and other things to know here. These are things that um, the different software packages that are out there, um, My Math Lab, Alex, Hawks, um, and there's others I've worked with in the past. They have different names now, I think. But I've seen these things over the, the years and, and even taught before they had these packages and now. And look, I've seen, I think I've seen all the way up to 25 squared. Uh-oh. I've seen all the way up to 25 squared. I've seen up to 11 cubed. I don't think I've seen 12 cubed before, but I've seen those two at least. And so I, I just always tell my students here, you need to know these. Now, I know you learned all the way up to right here. You learned all this right here with your little time tables and your flashcards or your apps or whatever you use, okay? I know you know all the way up to 12 times 12. All right, but a couple of things I want to point out. 8 squared is 64, right? You just need to know that. When you see 64 and you're in square mode, six, uh, 8. But then also look at 4 cubed. That is also 64. So you need to be careful when you see 64. You, you understand I'm looking at squares or cubes, okay? Um, and what, what the context is there. I want you to be so familiar with this. If you're riding down the road and you see the number 289, I want you to think, oh, that's 17 squared. You can even blurt it out and make everybody in the car think you're a math nerd, okay? Because you would be if you said that, right? But that's okay. I want it to be like a reflex, okay? Like a reflex. So if you see 361, you think, oh, 19 squared, right? If you see 216, I want you to think, oh, that's 6 cubed. Look, you need to know inside and out 1 through 5. Those things are going to occur enough that you need to know that forever. These two right here you need to be really familiar with because they're going to occur a lot, but maybe not as much. And then 8 through 12, I just want you to know they're there, okay? So that if you see 729, you go, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, uh, 9 cubed, all right? So other things I want you to know, 2 to the 4th is 16, 2 to the 5th is 32. Uh, you could keep going there. 2 to the 6th power is 64, 2 to the 7th power is 128, okay? You could keep multiplying by 2 and keep going up on the powers, all right, um, three to the fourth is eighty-one. Three to the fourth is eighty-one. Three to the fifth, I mentioned already, is two hundred and forty-three. So, just want you to know that that is there; it exists. Uh, but these are the ones on the screen. Take take a picture of this. Pause it. Take a picture of it. An image, whatever, uh, and and save this so that you can kind of familiarize yourself with these numbers. It will help you in your math journey. All right. So, I hope this has helped you, and uh, good luck with algebra and roots and radicals.